teaching this morning from Psalm 105, verses 3 through 5. The word says, Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength and seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his holy word. This morning we are gathered here to worship God. We're here to give him thanks. We're here to give him glory and honor. For we are sinners, and in our sinful state we must repent. We must repent and ask for his forgiveness. Would you bow your heads? Would you pray with me? Let's lift up a prayer of repentance and pray for this service. Let us go in Jesus' name. Mighty God, we humble ourselves before you. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who loves us and who has paid the price because we are sinners and we need your forgiveness. We need your mercy. We need your grace. And Jesus, your Son, the Holy One of God, He has provided, Lord. He has become our sin. He paid the price. He died on the cross. And you raised Him in power through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, anoint us this morning. Please be with us. Lead us and guide us for your glory and your glory alone. Empower us. Open our hearts and our minds to you. Let us rejoice and let us draw near to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you for every soul that's here today and every soul that hears the word. I pray, Lord, for them and I lift them up to you because I know, Lord, that every single one of them is precious to you. They are precious, Lord, because they belong to you. You made them, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would bless them with your leadership and your guidance and your power in their lives. Lord, we struggle. We know that we, we fail you. And in our weakness, Lord, we sin. Please forgive us. Let us come to you now and sincerely give you this time and give you our hearts. Help us to put away the world and not worry about yesterday or today or even tomorrow, but Lord, to just put our minds totally on you because you are a good God. You deserve much more than we can give you. But Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would humbly, that we would be humbly and Lord, you would accept our humbleness and you would accept our praise and our worship. For it's in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to sing Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is a help and salvation. For ye who hear, and now to his temple draw near, join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who are all things of wondrously reign. Shelter thee under his wing, Jesus, gently sustain us. Hast thou not seen how thy desires ever have been? A granted in what he ordained us. Pray to the Lord, oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that have life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the heart in sound from his people again. Gladly for how we adore Him. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine.
Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine upon me. Shine upon me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. I set a heart on fire. Oh, river flow, a flood the nation with grace and mercy. Send forth the word, a Lord and let there be light. Once again. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark is shining. Jesus, the Lord of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine upon me, shine upon me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set a heart on fire. The flow, river flow, a flood the nation. With grace and mercy, send forth your word, a Lord, and let there be light. Amen.
And I ask that you repeat after me as we go to the Lord in worship. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And be seated, please. And today we're going to skip a little bit in our Bibles, and we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 24. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 24. Sister Wazel will read for us in the Korean language. Sister Wazel, please. 하나님께서 주신 오늘의 말씀입니다. 데살로니가 전서 5장 12절에서 24절입니다. 형제들아 우리가 너에게 구하노니 너희 가운데서 수고하고 주 안에서 너희를 다스리며 그나는 자들을 너희가 알고 그들의 역사로 말미암아 사랑 안에서 가장 귀 여기며 너희끼리 함옥하라. 또 형제들아 너희를 건면하노니 게으른 자들을 경계하며 마음이 약한 자들을 격려하고 힘이 없는 자들을 붙들어 주며 모든 사람에게 오래 참으라. 상가 누가 누구에게든지 악으로 악을 갖지 말게 하고 서로 대하든지 모든 사람을 대하든지 항상 선을 따르라. 항상 기뻐하라. 쉬지 말고 기도하라. 범사에 감사하라. 이것이 그리스도 예수 안에서 너희를 행하신 하나님의 뜻이니라. 성령의 소문을 하지 말며 예언을 멸시하지 말고 번사에 헤아려 좋은 것을 취하고 악은 어떤 모양이라도 버리라 평강의 하나님이 친히 너희를 온전히 거룩하게 하시고 또 너희의 온 영과 혼과 몸이 우리 주 예수 그리스도께서 강림하실 때에 허무게 보존되기를 원하노라 너희를 부르시는 이는 믿보시니 그가 또한 이루시리라 아멘 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 24. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. Let's pray, please. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this, your holy word, and thank you for this message, and Lord, I thank you for these people who are before me, and those who hear this message. I ask, Lord, that you would bless us all with your Holy Spirit to give us eyes and ears. Lord, that we may see and hear what you would have for us this day. The Lord, that we would accomplish your good and perfect will, and under your leadership and blessings, Lord, may we draw near to you. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning I want to speak to you about commitment to being thankful. Are we committed to being thankful? We must be committed. You know, we are all, all of us, we are blessed by God. I dare say that everyone who is listening to this sermon has a lot to be thankful for. If we would just think about it, if we would just think about what God has, has done for us and, and what he's doing for us, we would be thankful. I'm a firm believer in that. 
The problem is we don't think about it. We, we get so involved in our lives and we don't take time to really think about how blessed we are. I know, and God knows, that sometimes our circumstances, sometimes our situations in life is just not, not very good sometimes. In fact, sometimes our situations may be very bad. And those are times that's really hard to think about things that we are thankful for. But still, if we're committed to it, we can still look for something to be thankful for. True thanksgiving, listen, this is the truth. True thanksgiving is a state of mind and an attitude. And there's always, I mean always, something positive for which we can be thankful There's a song that we sing sometimes, and I love this song. It's called Count Your Blessings, and it's page 489 in the Krim hymnal. Please, I would ask all y'all, please stand with me. We're going to sing verse 1 of Count Your Blessings. Please stand with me right now. Please, would you please stand? And let's sing Count Your Blessings. Maybe I should get out my hymnal too, huh? (laughs) We we don't need it. We can do it a cappella. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> well, we're going to try, right? When up on my pillows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. I count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. Now you may be seated. You know what? If you truly, if you truly count your blessings, you will be thankful. If you're not thankful, then you know what you probably are? You're probably complaining in life, and you're probably not very happy either. Dr. Dale Robert, or Watt Robbins, he wrote something, and I like what he wrote. This is what he wrote. He said, I used to think that people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I have come to realize that they have problems because they complain. Complaining doesn't change anything or make any situation better. In fact, it amplifies our frustration It amplifies spreading discontent and discord and can invoke an invitation for the devil to cause havoc in our lives. End quote. Complaining makes us miserable. Philippians 2, 14 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. You know, a positive, thankful person is a great witness in this dark world. We only shine when we are thankful. Our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful when we live it, and when we express it. Instead of looking at the negatives in our lives and complaining, we must look for positives and give thanks. Verse 18 of our text says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen. It clearly says, giving thanks is God's will for our lives. Giving thanks to God and to others is what pleases the Lord. So, I've got three main points, and my first one is this. We are all truly blessed. 1 Timothy 6, 17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything 
for our enjoyment. Now, I know some of you are, the first thing you think about in this verse is the verse where it says, command those who are rich. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm not rich. Well, I say to you, you are rich. And the reason that you don't think you are is because you're looking in the wrong direction. That's the problem with most of us. We look at what we don't have instead of what we do have. And not only that, we look at people who have more than we do. We don't look at the millions upon millions upon millions of people who have less than we do in this world. We're very blessed. You think you're so poor that you have to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken just to lick somebody else's fingers, don't you? I know you how you think. You're thinking you're poor. I understand that. But I think all of y'all have more than enough to eat. I think most of you have more than enough stuff that you could have a great big yard sale or garage sale if you wanted to. Many of us grew up with a lot less than we have now, didn't we, in this world? God has really blessed us. Have you counted your blessings lately? Have you? When we sang that song, you know. In fact, we're going to sing verse 2 of Count Your Blessings. Let's, let's sing uh, verse 2. We're going we're to sing it uh, uh, a cappella again, if I can find it. And I'm, I'm, we're going to sing it, and we're going to sing verse 2, okay? Are you ever burdened with a load of care? A does a cross seem heavy you are called to bear? I count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. I'm a firm believer in counting our blessings. I'm a firm believer. Now, some of you just was blessed and you missed it. You were just blessed. You know how you were blessed? Because you didn't have to stand up to sing. I didn't ask you to stand up and sing. So guess what? It's a blessing because you could sit there and sing. So see, look. Look for the blessings, as small as they may be. Most of y'all didn't even think about it, did you? That you were blessed because you could sit there and sing. Be thankful for the little things. We miss them. You see, we think it has to be something big to be thankful for, like a promotion or a win the lottery, or we have to have a fine car. We have to have all these big things to be thankful. But we miss the little things, and we need to be thankful for them. You know, I believe that God called me to preach so that he could bless me. I really believe that. And also, maybe, just maybe, I can help others to be blessed too. God has blessed me so much in so many ways, and I cannot thank God enough. Just saying thank you to God, just, it just doesn't seem like it's enough, does it? Just saying thank you, it, it's so little. Every day of my life, I thank God for all his blessings. God has been very good to me. You know, I may not be very rich by worldly standards, but I know this. I know that my Father in heaven, he owns everything. And he is my father. And I am so grateful to God for all the things he has given to me. I know I don't deserve it. I feel so unworthy. But God is a great God. And he wants me to enjoy his blessings. And we all have it so good. And number two... We enjoy our blessings. 
We all enjoy our blessings. The, the last part of 1 Timothy 6, 17 says, But to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Everything for our enjoyment. Are we having fun? Sometimes we work so hard to have fun in this life. We do crazy things to have fun, as a matter of fact. We, we, we do almost anything to have fun, don't we? I know people who they play sports or they play something or do something until they, they almost drop from exhaustion. You ever see people play so hard that they make themselves so tired they can't do anything else? We will eat until our stomachs hurt. Oh, no, you've never done that, have you? It's only me, it's only me. Eat too much, eat to the point to where our stomachs hurt, right? Yes. We will put off doing things we know we have to do just to have some fun. But then some of us complain. Had all this fun, but... We can't get out of bed to go to work, or we can't get out of bed to go to church. Had too much fun yesterday, or too much fun last night. Many times we, we have time to have fun, but not time to do what we have to do or should do. Someone said this. I wish I could take credit for it. I can't. He said, we worship our work, work at our play, and play at our worship. This is very true for many people today, and I'm very concerned about it because I think it puts us, it's a sign of what's happening in our world. Please turn in your Bibles with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Follow along as I read, please. 2 Timothy. 3, 1 through 5. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with them. Amen. It sounds to me like today's day we're very close to the end. But God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment and we often enjoy it too much don't get me wrong it's great to enjoy the blessings of god we should that's why he blesses us so that we can enjoy them but not to the point where this is our main focus we are not to focus on the gifts but rather on the giver of the gifts. James 1, 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. If it's good, it's from God. But let's not forget God. I've heard it said that moderation is the key. I think this is true when it comes to enjoying the pleasures of this life. Too much fun can be too much. Too much of a good thing can destroy a person in other ways. Brothers and sisters, like I've said, we have it so good and we enjoy it so much. In fact, maybe too much, in fact. Maybe we're enjoying the good things that God has given to us too much. Because it seems like we want more and more without thanking the Lord for what we already have. 
It seems like we're never content, never satisfied with what we already have. We always want more. And this craving for more, it actually captures us. Our craving, our lust for more controls us. It shapes our minds and our wills. The lust for more material things and and more pleasure dominates us and and it controls our lives to the point to where God is put on the sidelines or pushed completely out of the picture of our lives because we're so busy trying to get more, do more, have more, and we forget about God. In fact, some people have actually wandered from the faith chasing blessings and fun in this world. When we lust for more and more of the things of this world, the things of God tend to go out the window. Our faith is diluted. Our faith is drained Don't get me wrong, it's okay and you should enjoy the blessings of God. But put God first, put the giver first, and always put him first. Because he's the reason you are blessed. Number three is, we don't thank God enough. Years ago, I, I, I don't remember how long, but I remember the, the cartoon very distinctly is Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown was bringing out Snoopy's lunch, his dinner, on Thanksgiving Day. It was Thanksgiving Day, and he was bringing out the lunch to Snoopy. Uh, But unfortunately, the bowl was nothing but just regular dog food that Snoopy got every day. And Snoopy took a look at the dog food, and he said, this isn't fair. The rest of the world today is, is eating turkey with, with, with all the trimmings and, and all I get is dog food. Because I'm a dog, I get dog food. He stood there looking at his dog food for a moment and he said, well, I guess it could be worse. I could be a turkey. Now think about that for a second. Brothers and sisters, whenever we think that life is unfair to us, we really need to think again. We could be a turkey on Thanksgiving. We could have been born in a third world country or raised in some third world country where people have very little or absolutely nothing. We are truly blessed. Now, I think some of you are like me. You've been to some of the third world countries and you have seen what people who, some people who really don't have anything. We don't, most of us don't realize what we have because we've not seen the people that don't have anything. And it's sad. Instead of thinking about how little we have, we need to count up what we do have and we need to give thanks. In fact, we're going to sing verse 3. There's one more verse. I know some of y'all think, well, thank God there's not four verses to that song. Verse 3 of Count Your Blessings. And you may remain seated. I'm going to bless you even more. Follow along as I read. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. I count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Amen. Okay, verse 18 of our text says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will in you in Christ Jesus. Remember, 
earlier, I said that being thankful is a decision. It's an attitude of our hearts. You can decide to be thankful. Think about the following situations, which, by the way, they are true. I am thankful because I pay taxes, because it means I have a job. I am thankful for the clothes that I've got on that fit too tight because it means I have enough to eat. I'm thankful for a lawn at home and needs mowing and windows that need to be cleaning and gutters that need to be cleaned out and fixed because you know what? It means I have a home. I am thankful for when I'm in a parking lot and I can't find any parking spaces except for one way out there. And the reason I'm thankful for that is because that means I know I can walk if I have to. I'm thankful for my heating bill, my electric bill, because it means I can be warm. I'm thankful for the complaining that I hear about our government and that I do myself, because it means I have freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the alarm that goes off every morning when I get up because that means I'm alive. I'm thankful for the weariness and the aching muscles that I have at the end of every day because it means I've been moving. I'm, yes, I can be thankful for that. I can be thankful for all of that stuff that we may complain about. You know, and I could go on and on and on because there's so much that we have. We have so much to be thankful for. It's our attitude that counts. We came into this world with nothing. When I was born, I had no clothes on. I had absolutely nothing but the eternal soul that God gave me. Everything else I have right now, everything I have is a blessing. Everything. And we can never give too much thanks to God. Never. We owe him so much. So in conclusion, there's this 12-year-old boy by the name of David. I won't talk about his last name, but he was born without an immune system. You've heard about him, because there's, but there's more than one out there, believe me. He went, underwent a bone marrow transplant in order to correct the deficiency of his immune system. Up to that point, he had spent his entire life in a plastic bubble in order to keep, prevent him from getting in touch with germs or bacteria or viruses that you and I uh, just take for granted. They could kill him, so he couldn't touch anything or be around anybody. He lived without ever feeling human contact. He couldn't touch his mother. He couldn't touch his father. The only thing he could touch was what was in the bubble. When he was asked, he says, well, what's it going to be like when this operation's over and, and you can leave this bubble? What do you think? What are you thinking about? What do you want to do? And he says, this is what I want to do. I want to walk barefoot in the green grass, and I want to touch my mother's hand. Things that we take for granted every day. We are truly blessed. We are truly blessed. We just got to look in the right direction. We have it so good. We enjoy it so much. And most of the time, we express it too little. Yes, it's Thanksgiving Day. But like someone's already said, every day should be Thanksgiving Day. Hopefully this week coming up, you will really be thankful in your heart. God's Word says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, wonderful, wonderful God, loving God that you are. What can we do, Lord? 
just saying thanks, Lord, for the blessings that you have given to us, which is so above and beyond. They are numberless, Lord. We, there's no way we could come up with the things that we need to thank you for, Lord, because everything, everything we have comes from you. And just saying thank you doesn't seem to be enough. Lord, your word tells us that everything belongs to you. So there's nothing we can give you because everything we have is yours. But you ask us, Lord, for one thing to give to you that you don't take or won't, and that is our hearts. Father, help us to give you our hearts this day to give our hearts to you out of gratitude, if not for no other reason, Lord, let us give you our hearts because we are thankful. Let us give you our hearts because, Lord, we owe you so much more. Your love endures forever. You have showed us that love through your son Jesus. You have provided salvation for us. You are calling us, Lord, and your love, Lord, is so rich, Lord, we don't even understand it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let us celebrate Thanksgiving, Lord, by really giving you our hearts, our minds, our souls. Thank you, Lord. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Let's all stand.